Обикновеното според дали природата на върховната абсолютна истина е личностна или безличностна. Според база въздиха, абсолютната истина е безгрешната личност, Шри и Кришна, и това се потвърждава на всяка крачка. В този стих специално се подчертава, че абсолютната истина е личност. Това е безгрешната личност. Това, че безгрешната личност е върховната абсолютна истина, се потвърждава също и в Гама Самита. Ишвара Парама Кришна Сапкитанам Магивиаха. Тоест, върховната абсолютна истина, безгрешната личност е Господ Кришна, който е съвечният Господ, резервуарът на цялото наслаждение, богиня и вечната форма на пълно блаженство и знание. Тези авторитетни източници не оставят съмнение, че абсолютната истина е върховната личност и сината на всички причини. Интерсионалистите оспорват това схващане, като се позовават на ведическите утвърдения, дадено от Светъщата Рапанишат. Като я от Раптарам, тъд Арупам, Анамиям, я и тъд Видур, Амретасти, Баванти, Отетре, Дукам, Ива Пианти. В материалния свят, Брама, първо съживеща същество в Вселената, е приеман за най-вис сред полубоговете, човешките същества и мистичните животни. Но над Брама е трансценденталността, която няма материална форма и е свободна от всички материални замъсявания. Този, който може да я опознае, също става трансцендентален, а тези, които не я познават, страдат на другия свят. Интерционалистите отдават по-голямо значение на думата Аарупам, но това Аарупам не е безличностно. То се използва за обозначаване на трансценденталната форма на вечност, блаженство и знание. Такава, каквато описваме в цитирания по-бърз стих от Брама Самита. В няколко стиха в Шветът Шатара Опанишат Vidaham etam purusham mahantam aditya varnam tamasa purastat tomeva vidvan oti mrityumeti nanya panta vidyate yanaya yasmat param na paramastikinchit yasman naniyo no chvayo stikinchit vriksha iva stabdho tivi titashtye kas Тенедъм пурнам порушена сървам. Познавам Бога, върховната личност, който е трансцендентален по отношение на всички материални схващания, свободени от невежи. Само човек, който го познава, може да преодолее околите на раждането и смъртта. Няма друг начин за освобождение, освен знание си за върховната личност. Няма истина повише от върховната личност, която е най-висшата. Тя е по-малка от най-малкото и по-голяма от най-голямото. Тя стои как като безмълвно дърво и осветява трансценденталните небе. И както дървото простира корените си, така тя разпространява обширните си енергии. От тези стихове човек може да направи извода, че върховната абсолютна истина е Бог, върховната личност, който е всекомистъс посредством многобройности материални и духовни енергии. Мата пратрам на нят кинчи расти да нан джая. Май сървам и дам протам сутре и мани гана ива. О, заболеватели на богатство, няма истина повече от мен. Всичко е с мен, как си перни, нанизани на земя. Мукам кроти бача на мана на айде и на пита да рам на нанизи и на мана на пърна. 
And this is a key verse in the Bhagavad Gita. And this example of the pearls hung on a thread are very instructive. So this is Bhagavad Gita announcing that what they used to what it seemed like was uh, to be rich uh, the classic individual in fairy tale movie uh Nikita. Mm-hmm. Krishna is called he has one name, Sat, which means real. So all that is real must be supported by Krishna. Because he is the original and supreme Sat. And that which is not supported by Krishna is not real. But everything is supported by Krishna. <laughs> this is what Krishna declares here in this verse. Everything rests upon me as pearls are strung on a thread. So then what is unreal? Unreality is something that exists up here. Mm-hmm. Due to our own ignorance, we separate or we attempt to separate everything from Krishna. Mm-hmm. We refuse to see because of our lusty desire to enjoy matter. We refuse to see uh, how everything, including ourselves, is supported by Krishna. So that state of refusing to admit that Krishna is a support of everything is called Maya, illusion. So, uh, one in that position of Maya actually has no position. <laughs> Just like uh, this example is very instructive. Exactly as you, you as if you want to enjoy a necklace of pearls by placing it around your own neck. But if as soon as it rests around your neck, the string breaks, then all the pearls fall off and they go scattering in all directions. Mm-hmm. That means that this neck, the foundation of the necklace, was not secure. Mm. So similarly, uh, when we try to assume the position of enjoyer, then <laughs> our attempt to enjoy is scattered in all directions like the pearls. Krishna, you see, the relationship between Krishna and his energies, this string and the pearls, is the relationship of enjoyer and enjoyed. Uh, 
Krishna is the only enjoyer. So our rightful position is to be enjoyed. By Krishna. Mm -hmm. So that means we have to take shelter of the energy that Krishna enjoys. And that is Srimati Radharani. Today is her appearance day. Radha and Krishna are inseparable as are the thread and the pearls. Mm -hmm. They are the supreme reality. Mm -hmm. Just like uh, Krishna's energy is called prakriti. This, this word is used. It means nature. So prakriti is a feminine term. It means female. Krishna is the only male. Krishna is the only male. Everything else, his energy, is female. And the supreme form of his energy is Srimati Radharani. Mm -hmm. So Srimati Radharani, uh, by uh, understanding her position, we can understand uh, the true relationship of the energy to the energetic. Mm -hmm. Srimati Radharani is always serving Krishna. Mm -hmm. This is her life and soul. Mm -hmm. And she's serving Krishna with Mahabhav. Mahabhav means the greatest ecstasy. No one, there's no devotee whose uh, ecstasy of love or the Supreme can rival Srimati Radharani. Mm -hmm. So we are, you know, we living entities are tiny sparks, tiny expansions of this feminine spiritual energy of Krishna. Mm. So for us to assume our right, rightful relationship with Krishna means that we must receive a position of service granted by Srimati Radharani, who is the supreme servant of Krishna. And as long as we think that we are the male, or in other words, the enjoyer, or in other words, we think we are the support of our own existence, all these conceptions of thinking ourselves to be Krishna, then we cannot assume our real position. We cannot assume our real position. This condition we are in now is called Asad Grahat. 
Asadgahat means that we have taken hold of something unreal. Hmm. We're all thinking I am the enjoyer. We're all thinking that this material world is my energy. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter if, because I mentioned this point of male, female, it doesn't matter if you're in a male body or a female body. In the material world, everybody has the same conception. Everyone is thinking, I am the enjoyer. Some are enjoying as men, some are enjoying as, or shall we say, some are trying to enjoy as men, some are trying to enjoy as women. But everyone is equally in Maya, you see, equal rights. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, Prahlad Maharaj says, Tatsadu manye asurya varya dehinam. Uh, Prahlad Maharaj inst is instructing his father, uh, Hiranyakashipu who he calls Asurya Varya. My dear father, you are the best example of someone who's thinking of himself as Krishna, the enjoyer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Asura, you're a demon. <laughs> That's what it means for someone, uh, part and parcel of Krishna, to think I am Krishna. It means he's a demon. Hmm. So Hiranyakashipu had asked his little son, Prahlad, what is the best thing you have learned? <coughs> And Prahlad answered, Tatsadu manye asurya varya dehinam. Oh, best of the demons. <laughs> this is what I have learned. Mm, that Sada samud vigya diyat asadgrahat. He uses this term, asadgrahat. That for those who have grasped illusion, for those who have taken, tried to take the position that I am the energetic. Huh? In other words, everything is my energy. I am the enjoyer. I am the supreme. Like you, my dear father. Those who think this way, uh, they're constantly troubled by anxiety. Hurry up. <laughs> now you forgot. I also forgot. Sada samudviga diam. Their intelligence is always troubled by so many problems. Hmm? This is the meaning, asad grihat. They're not God, <laughs> but they're trying to be God. <laughs> so their whole life becomes a big problem. Hmm? Trying to prove that they're God when they're not. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, Prahlad Maharaj says, My dear father, you have to give this up. You have fallen down into a dark well of material existence. Mm -hmm. 
Andukupa means a blind well. Means, uh, like if you ever visit India, you will see, because India is a, so many parts of India are dry, quite dry. There's only rain one time in the year, or in the monsoon season, for some weeks, but the rest of the year, no rain. So the wells they dig are very, very deep. And Andukupam, blind well, means that grass has grown over the opening of the well. You, you can't see it. And if you're walking through the field, and you step there, <laughs> then you fall many, many meters down into the earth. And because the well is hidden, then who will come to help you? It's overgrown. Nobody's using it. So you can call, help, help. There's no one to hear. So, Sri Pallad Maharaj told his father, your position is like that. You've fallen into a dark well. Huh? And yet you're thinking in your in your dark well, I am God. <laughs> I am the enjoyer. Hmm. Everything belongs to me. <laughs> Such foolishness. Uh, so, Pilar Maharaj concludes uh, that one must vanam gato ya dhyam ashayeta vanam gato ya dharim ashayeta one must leave this material existence uh, and enter the forest vanam and in the forest, in the van, one must take shelter of Hari or Krishna. And the name Hari means he who takes away. So, Lord Krishna takes away this false conception. Mm -hmm. That's when He shows His real mercy upon us. Yasyaham anugranamni harishe tadhanam shanat. We are fools, uh, thinking ourselves to be the controller and enjoyer of the material energy. <laughs> we have amassed possessions. Uh, we have amassed around us so-called opulence. We are entangled in illusory affairs with other fools. And thus we are blind, hmm? blinded by this situation. So, there are many who pray. They go to the temple, they go to the church, and they pray to God, please blind me even more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I don't have enough material attachments. Please increase them. <laughs> Please throw me even farther down into this dark well of material life. So when the prayers of such people are answered, they think, oh yes, now I've received the mercy of God. But this is not really His mercy. His mercy is Yasyaham Anugranamni Harashi Tadhanam Shanai. The Lord says, when I take away Hari, Hari means He takes away. When I take everything away from someone so that he sees actually, uh, I have nothing. Uh, I am not the Lord. I am not the controller. I am not the enjoyer. I am servant. Then, to that person I have shown my real mercy. So one can receive this mercy by taking shelter of the van, the forest. Now this doesn't mean just any forest. Hmm. It means Vrindavan. <laughs> the forest of Vrindavan. Mm. In Vrindavan, the transcendental land of Krishna's pleasure pastime, Srimati Radharani is always dancing for the pleasure of Krishna. So when Prahlad Maharaj said to his father, Vanam Gato, go to the forest, he actually was saying, go to the forest and take shelter of Srimati Radharani, who is the supreme devotee of Lord Krishna. In that forest, Srimati Radharani is the most beautiful, blissful teenage girl who lives only for the pleasure of Krishna. Mm -hmm. She is described by in a wonderful Vaishnava poem, uh, Skalita Gatir Udgata Saukyam, hmm? that uh, Skalita Gatir uh, Udagat uh, Svanta Saukina, yeah, this is it, that uh, she's actually, she's in so much ecstasy, so much happiness, hmm of service to Krishna, that she's stumbling, you know, like a, like a drunken woman. She's stumbling from one service to the other. Huh? And she's she, behind her, in her wake, as she's wandering from one place to another to serve Krishna, are following, her, uh, following a great train of devotees. You know, they're pulled behind her. Mm -hmm. They're uh, caught up in the waves of her ecstasy to serve Krishna. Mm -hmm. She's so enthusiastic 
She's like an unlimited ocean of enthusiasm to serve Krishna. So anyone who gets the mercy of her association immediately becomes infused with enthusiasm to serve the Lord. Her every movement, her every glance enlivens those who associate with her. Enlivens them with pure devotional service, sentiments of pure devotion. Mm-hmm. So therefore the devotees, they simply pray for the shelter of Radharani's lotus feet. Mm-hmm. One Vaishnava poet has prayed, when will I get the shelter of your lotus feet? Even if it is just in a dream. He's praying like that. Even if it can be just in a dream, I'm waiting for that day when I can attain the lotus feet of Srimati Radharani. Because that is the safe position. That is the real position. You see, because Krishna, he is independent. In his loving pastimes, he is called, he has a name. Actually, Lord Chaitanya has also addressed him with his name, Lampat. Lampat means debauchee. You don't know this word? Lampat means a young man who has many, many, many women friends. And he's not loyal to any of them. He's always getting new, newer and newer girlfriends and leaving the old ones behind. Playboy. Playboy. <laughs> 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 But actually, actually Krishna can never give up his special affection for Radharani. Although sometimes he, he goes away from her, but he always comes back. <laughs> so, why, why does he come back? Because... No one can match Srimati Radharani's devotion. She is unlimitedly absorbed in Krishna consciousness. Her mind is uh, fixed upon Krishna day and night. Mm-hmm. And by her intense meditation upon Krishna, Krishna, he cannot escape. So one who has the shelter of Srimati Radharani then is assured of always being in Krishna consciousness. Even if Krishna leaves Radharani, Krishna is always with Radharani at the same time in the form of her ecstasy of love for Krishna. Mm-hmm. 
So even when Krishna is separate, Radharani is always thinking and speaking, discussing about Krishna with uh, like like a flood, like an uh, a great river of ecstasy flowing from her mouth. So you can see Krishna conscious this is what Krishna consciousness means. Uh, and therefore one who has the shelter, the mercy of Srimati Radharani's association is guaranteed uh, to always be in Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. So, Krishna cannot hide from her. Mm -hmm. Krishna can hide from everyone else. Is he just like this? This verse also, uh, a string on which pearls are strung. So you cannot see the string. Similarly, now we cannot see Krishna because we're seeing only his external energy. Mm. So, but from Radharani, Krishna cannot hide. As you know, once when the gopis were looking for Krishna, he assumed the form of Lord Narayan, four-handed Vishnu. So, when the gopis saw Krishna in this form, uh, they immediately offered their respectful obeisances. Oh, Lord Narayan, you've come to Vrindavan. Please accept our humble obeisances. Have you seen Krishna? <laughs> so then Krishna, in this four-handed form, he pointed, yes, Krishna went that side. <laughs> so the gopis went, went running in that direction. Hmm. But just at that moment, Srimati Radharani arrived on the scene. And her love for Krishna is so overwhelming that Krishna's two extra hands disappeared. He, he was trying to maintain them, but they disappeared. Mm -hmm. So then all the gopis could see, oh, here is Krishna. <laughs> so this is the way to always be in touch with Krishna. That means to be under the shelter of the purest, pure devotee, the supreme devotee, Srimati Radharani, at whose lotus feet all other devotees have taken shelter. Mm -hmm. So on this day, the appearance day of Srimati Radharani, uh, we are praying that she will give us the shelter of her lotus feet by giving the shelter, giving us the shelter of the lotus feet of her pure followers. In this way, one is established in one's real position. Mm -hmm. 
the female, the transcendental female position of servant of Krishna. Uh-huh. So it's interesting to note that now many people think uh, that when we chant Hare Krishna, we chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. So many Rama Rama. So many people think that chanting Hare Krishna means to call upon Radharani to attain Krishna. But in actual fact, in uh, this Sampradaya, the Sampradaya of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, those who chant this mantra are calling upon Krishna to give the association, the shelter of Srimati Radharani. Mm-hmm. You're praying to Krishna to please engage me uh, as a servant of your internal energy, who is Radharani. Because then the position is secure. If you try to run after Krishna himself, you cannot catch him. <laughs> he is independent. He is a rascal. <laughs> That's what lampat means. <laughs> but if we take shelter of Radharani, then Krishna consciousness is assured because she is the very form of pure Krishna consciousness. Mm-hmm. The most ecstatic devotee who is so merciful. Uh, she has so many ideas for serving Krishna and therefore she needs so many friends to help her. She's always engaging all of her friends and talking to them about Krishna, enlivening them. Uh, in the, her association, the ecstasy of Krishna consciousness is increasing and increasing unlimitedly moment by moment. <laughs> So the same Srimati Radharani has appeared as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Radha Krishna Nahiyanya. He is Radha and Krishna mixed together. And he is transmitting the same enthusiasm, uh, particularly for the service of Sankirtan. Sankirtan, chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra, preaching, distributing Prabhupada's books. This is actually simply another form of vana seva, the this, this service to Krishna in Vrindavan. Mm-hmm. So, we can understand when Prahlad Maharaj told his father, Vana Gato, go to the forest. Uh, he was also saying, go on Sankirtan. Mm-hmm. 
Но у тебя без уранка это смешно сказать. У тебя не так бы ты. In this age, this is how one goes to the forest of Vrindavan. He goes on Sankirtan. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the same Srimati Radvani who has appeared uh, as the most ecstatic, most enlivened Sankirtan devotee. Mm-hmm. So, in the same way that the devotees of Vrindavan take shelter of Srimati Radharani's lotus feet in their intimate service to Krishna there, so here we must take shelter of the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the service of Sankirtan. Bhagavad Gita Zadiz Ki Jai Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bhav